I'm the Collections Access Officer for Carrick Fergus Museum and this is our latest project and I'm delighted to tell you you're the first members of the public to actually see it. It's been a long time coming. Um, this is the guard room, okay, and um, this interprets the, um, the site as it was and it was built in 1900. So what we have done here, um, it's gone for part recreation. So there are some um, uh, original period items in here and also some replicas. And then um, to give an impression of how it would have looked at the time uh, and also um, interpretive exhibition. So it tells the story of the Antrim Artillery Militia. Um, they were um, part of the history of fabric, uh, part of the history of Carrick Fergus for over 60 years. And um, they were formed in 1854 and they um, had their headquarters at the castle and then they took over this site in 1856. At that time, the old jail was still here. So they were using the old um, jail building and the old courthouse, which is now our town hall. And then at the end of the century, they um, knocked down the old jail and they built this, the guard room, the warrant officer's house, which is the building next to it. That's where the, the senior NCO would have been living to look after the site. And they built um, this building here, which is now our museum and civic centre. Uh, that was um, ordnance door and barracks in there as well. So the, the purpose of, um, of this um, new heritage attraction is to tell the story of the Antrim Artillery, who they were, what they did, um, the training, recruitment, their overseas service. Um, but also um, to give a flavour of the, um, the wider history of the site, which dates back over 800 years when it was originally the Franciscan Friary. So we have a recreated cell in this room. You're more than welcome to go in there. And in this room, sorry, I don't have the lights on. This is um, an exhibition. And you can see here, this is an original plan of the site from 1900. And you'll see that um, this is where we are now. This is where we were standing and we've got um, the old courthouse and we did sort of do research on what would have been in the room and we've gone for something just very, very sparse. Um, uh, an original table which came from a Victorian barracks. So again, you know, the research said it would have been a basic chess table and we were able to source one from um, Palmerston Fort Society over in England. Yeah. So they were based there. So this is a family album actually. So that's oh, him. So that's them up at, um, on their annual camps up at Dunree. Um, just to give you an idea of just the scale of the, of, of the project, we've had a lottery, uh, the National Lottery Heritage Fund award of 1.78 million. We've had six. Quite an understated Victorian type yes. facade. So. You've, you've got that and it's you know it's similar in nature to the other buildings along here. Um, there's some mouldings around the window which are maybe a little bit more ornate than, than, than these. But by and large, from the street, the building doesn't scream at you. It's sort of, we felt it was a Victorian building. Um, as we go through into the first staircase, we go through uh, what's a really quite a thick wall. The wall to the left is the party wall with the Dobbins Hotel. So we always knew it was probably older than what we thought. Um, and then as we go up through this, the, the, the floors, I'll point out uh, floor structures to you and so forth, which again highlighted to us that it is an older building, part of a staircase at the top of the building, which then which really brought home to us that the building was older than what we had first thought looking at it from the street uh, and what we'd been led to believe in terms of how old the building was. As you go up through this, you'll notice this, this wall that you're going up is a mixture of stone and brickwork. Um, this section, we believe, was added later um, and is not part of, is not as old certainly as this, these walls. Basically, the building was residential, completely residential up to 1951. We reckon there's been a building here from, of some sort since the 1600s at, at, at the earliest. We reckon it was, it, it, it was probably a single story to begin with and then replaced at some stage with two story and then at some stage it was raised again to the three story um, and there's some clues which will tell you why we think why we think about the, the raising to the third story as we go up uh, further um, in this in this room here this is the only one with uh, uh, cornicing uh, around um, if there was cornicing in any of the rooms it's, it's since gone um, 
again, ceilings have been, some of the ceilings have been altered, so this is uh, partly plasterboard above here. There's a uh, lath and plaster on the other side and lath and plaster across the other section. In the room I bring you across to here, it'll show, you begin to see how the floor structure works. Um, so um, in each floor, we've got a central beam that goes along, um, and you see that projecting down from up above here. And then there's joists that go from front to back, and they are all, all of that is, is an oak. Um, the, the, the oak joists are all tenoned in to the, the uh, oak beams. And I'll just bring you through here and show you just more the detail of that. Those, that, that uh, oak, we've had a, a, a dendrochronologist come out and they basically, is a guy, David Brown from Queen's University in Belfast, the only one in our, Ireland apparently. And he, he basically drills into the, the, the wood takes a core sample of it, and then from the, basically studying the tree pattern, the, the ring pattern underneath a microscope, he can date that to a certain, a certain date. Part of that will be because it was used as green oak, so it'll be a natural twisting of it even before it went into the building. Um, and then when it went into the building, we reckon the large beam would have, been, would have been machined or hand carbon, depending on what they had available. So basically, made, made off-site, put together, dismantled, brought to site, put back together again. So what we've got here is we've got the, the, the oak beam that runs uh, across the middle of the, of the, of the building. We've got, we've got joists, oak joists that run from the front to, to the central beam, and again from the, from the central beam to the back. Um, this would be made up as a kit of parts. So you have the oak beam, with um, joiner marks on here, in this particular case, uh, the, the, uh, an X, um, and on the joist you have a corresponding mark, again an X, and then you've got, uh, a, so the joist locates into the, the oak beam and is secured by a timber doll which is driven in. Um, a 1660 to 1680 in terms of their Staircase, all of these here are hand carved. So if you look, if you look closely at them, you, you begin to see like uh, tooling marks on them again. Um, uh, so it's just phenomenal, really, in, in terms of again that sort of uh, form and shape. Well, the walls look like they have been. You've got a mixture of stone, then you've got brick. So we do think that this has been raised up at some point. Um, the the on the on the roof there there's oak trusses like this. But the bit that ties them across at this point in time now is pitch pine. Thanks for coming and I welcome you here to, to Marketplace. Uh, I'm Philip, uh, Philip Rainey, I'm project manager looking after the, the development of this site. But the upper floors were completely vacant. Um, and had been reconfigured as office space, really. So a lot of internal walls, suspended ceilings, so you couldn't actually see, you know, it was impossible to see what was above. And in fact, if I'm absolutely honest, uh, when we, we looked at redeveloping uh, the, the, the upper floors, we actually missed a, a room. There's a room at the end of this building. Once we've uncovered this, it's a kind of, it, it, it sparked interest in terms of trying to find out what, you know, what the history was. Really, you've got three buildings here. You've got boot three, which is boots. If I refer them to the ground floor, then you'll, you'll, you'll connect. So boots is number three. Ollie's, the cafe, is number three C. And number five is the RA Glasses, which is the one we're over at the minute. The number three building was built uh, in and around the 19th century and was actually gifted to the YMCA in Carrick, Fergus by a Colonel James Craig uh, from Nottinghamshire. And he was part of a linen uh, bleaching family, Northern Irish family, obviously quite wealthy. But uh, I mean, the YMCA had been in Carrick Ferguson since about 1873 uh, in various places. As an aside, we are uh, proposing to rename this development Carlton House to take it back to the original the turn of the century name, uh, subject to statutory approvals. Uh, in 1908, the building, which is known as 3C, the Ollie's building, 
which had been there since the mid 19th century, was actually replaced. So it was rebuilt in about 1902. And in 1908, the YMCA took it over as a meeting hall and, uh, and accommodation, I guess, for, for, their, for their members. And the photograph you see in the back there is actually the opening ceremony in 1908 of that, that building. The, the building known as or number five, RA Glasses, uh, again, was originally uh, an L-shaped building mid 19th century. And in fact, the, there was a row of terrace buildings continued up towards St. Nicholas's. Gable wall of number five is the original, the external gable wall is the original gable wall. When you see the building internally, when we go into it, when we took the render off the internal walls and we took all the suspended ceilings down, we found a number of things. You'll see a lot of arch head windows, which have been replaced with a, a rectangular lintel, or you know, put a lintel in to make a rectangular opening. You'll see arches halfway up floor levels, which are obviously either tall windows or access ports. There is actually an arch, a carriage arch, in the front of the number three building, the Boots building. So at a time, there must have been an access for a carriage through there. Again, it's been completely covered up and re re reconfigured now. In terms of the building structure itself, the number three, the roof at the back of the building, there's a, a King Post truss and uh, purlins in there, which apparently date back to the late 19th century. So this part of the rear part of the building may actually be older than the front because it was being dated to the mid, or mid uh, 19th century. But you'll see that King Post truss and you'll see some samples of the timbers that we've uncovered here. Uh, and you can have a close look at those when we come back down. But you'll see the joinery methods are, you know, it's all no bolts and nails, it's all uh, tenon joints and so on. In terms of what our project involves, and I have to say again, I keep saying this, and every time I'm, I'm speaking about the project, I say it would not have happened without the THN. That's just fact. Because when you're dealing with a building like this, the costs of refurbishment, you just couldn't make a business case without it. So that's where the value of the THI scheme comes. And of course, we, I mean, I happen to live in a very old cottage, so I'm quite into the, the you know, the historic materials and so on. But allowing us to put back what was there is fantastic. So when you see the roof, unfortunately we can't get you up on the scaffold for obvious reasons, health and safety, but you can see the roof from the street, and, but you'll be able to catch a glimpse of this roof from the upper story and you'll see that there's Welsh slates have gone back on there. And indeed, they've been put back on to the 19th century roof trusses. So the roof is not flat, it's wavy, but that's the way it is, it's the way it was, it's settled into that shape. Uh, so in terms of what we're, we're aiming to achieve here, the ground floor shop fronts, Ollie's and Boots, we don't unfortunately own the glasses shop, but Ollie's and Boots will be replaced with a <laughs> heritage shop front. We're going to remove the roller shutters. In the upper floors, we're reconfiguring them into five residential units. So the place will become an apartment, uh, hopefully a living place. Uh, we're hoping to, we have a, a, there's a garden area in, hidden between North Street and this building at the back of this section, which we're hoping to create as an amenity space for the residents and hopefully a cafe adjacent in North Street. So all being well, by next April, May, we should be seeing people starting to live back in the marketplace again. Uh, and above, on the front section, on the second floor, we've got the same footprint. So you've got three, three C, five. This is number three, and that is the hidden room. <laughs> so what happened, just a quick explanation, when we, when we purchased the place, there's a, there's a ground floor room, which I made the assumption was part of the Boots demise. And when the architect did the plans for this building, the apartment that is this, this is the first apartment here, it finished there. When we actually started doing the site investigations, we found that actually Boots demise finishes at that wall and actually the end room was part of our demise. <laughs> so we were able to take this room in. So when we broke through, we found that the floor level, as you can see, was significantly higher. Now we're leaving that, we're gonna have a step, that's gonna be a living area for the residential unit. And there'll be, there'll be a stepped 
there'll be steps and a little balustrade going, but we're leaving everything else as, it, as is. But as you look around the walls here, do you see the arch heads? Yeah. And you can see where the concrete lintels have been subsequently put in. We didn't put those in there, we were there when we uncovered it. So those were obviously the old heads of the sliding sash windows. In terms of what we're putting back, all the windows in the project are hardwood sliding sash weighted windows. We have uh, eight windows in the 3C building, first and second floors, which are being refurbished. They're the original sash windows, and we are currently refurbishing them. Our HUJ boils are refurbishing them. Uh, the roof here is are all original, with the exception, obviously, the strengthening timbers you see. We have structural engineer, obviously, as a requirement for, uh, you know, so we can future-proof the building. But this truss here and the purlins associated with it are estimated to be 19th century. And you can see, you look at how they're joined. You know, there's no, it's, they're, they're all, I'm not a joiner, so I'm not familiar with the exact terminology, but you can see they're all manually jointed. Again, if you look in the wall here, do you see the timbers here, here, in the wall? Not quite sure what they were for, but clearly at one stage there was probably a floor at that level which is probably consistent with the ceiling height we have, and maybe something to do with the fact that if you look at the front wall here, can you see the archway? Can you see the brick arch yeah. underneath the right-hand two windows? Do you see it? Yeah. That has been subsequently blocked in. So again, we don't know whether perhaps there's a carriageway came in here or, or some such. The original rear of the building, if you want, you can see here, so you can see where there were windows at one time. There's one blocked in there. And when you go onto the upper floor, you'll see a number of others. When we were looking at the, the floor inspections here, or floor investigations, uh, I came in one day and there was a, a hole in the floor which there was this metal plate had been put over. And when I lifted the metal plate, it was a YMCA sign, which is out there actually, from the early 20th century. So it's about 19, probably about 1906, seven. Since certainly the mid 20th century, probably a little before. Uh, it was owned by a guy called Mark Armstrong. He traded here from, from the early 70s. And then he sold to Baird's Chemists, who then sold to Boots. And Boots were the, 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 the company. That Boots actually bought the entire building and I bought the building from, from Boots. Uh, but it shows you the context of Village Northern Ireland. Mark Armstrong, uh, it turned out, a friend of my mum's who lives up in Port Ballantrae, it, it, he was her brother-in-law, <laughs> which I only found out, unfortunately, tragically, at her funeral. But I met, uh, I met Mark Armstrong's niece and brought them round, actually, to, to see the place. But as Philippa said, when we entered that room, eventually having found it, in the ground floor, it's like walking into the past. It's, it's like walking into 1950 or 1948. There's posters on the wall from back then of pears, soap, and, so on. And lots of tea cases, which they used to store stuff in, and old shelves with all the drug names written on them, you know. So it was fascinating seeing, seeing that. And indeed, the ground floor, all those artifacts are still there. But we're not, we're not refurbishing the ground floor at this stage. It's like a target, you know, it's, it's big. And you just don't realize until you actually strip everything back. And you see, because when I first came here, this was all partitioned as offices, so you didn't get a sense of the space. It was, you know, the ceiling height was probably just your standard eight foot. Yeah. Yeah. Plasterboard ceilings right the way throughout the place. So just phenomenal. And then when we started stripping out, what we're planning to do is to retain as much of that height as possible. Obviously there was a chimney breast there at the time. Now we have replaced the chimneys, but they're not functional because obviously we now have got shops in the ground floor, so it's not possible to, to take the breast all the way down. The original passageway between the two buildings, I'm guessing probably going back to the YMCA days. I'd say this building and the next building were adjoined in 1908 when the YMCA took it over. So this was all kind of part of the one thing. So I'm guessing that was probably, you know, just a link corridor plate. You have to straighten the whole roof. Now this is a, obviously a replacement roof, probably from the mid 20th century. But we left the wall plate where it was so that the roof has still, <laughs> has still got the bellies in it that are hard when we took the slates off it. But again, uh, th th this section has all been, all roofs are being re-slated re with, uh, 
but with uh, Welsh slates, yeah. Uh, and you can see, you know, the, the, the joinery techniques in the peg and the, the, the tenon and mortise, mortise, mortise joints. Um, indeed, the, the joiner had marked it. Where is it, Philip? Oh, yes, here. Three ticks. Three ticks to identify which, which bit was corresponding. <laughs> so it's amazing for me. And, and again, if you look at the timber, it's hand hewn. So it's not, you know, not been put through a planing machine. Uh, so that I means it's great, so we're obviously keeping that for historic just value. Just for interest, these are the weights from the sliding sash windows that have been refurbished. They've all been referenced to the particular window they come from, but they will date back to 1902. So this is the, the sign that we uncovered. Uh, and you can see it's, excuse me, it is a, it's not a printed sign. It's more than likely hand painted. And it was made by a company called Chromo in Wolverhampton. Now, this was being used as a, or had been found and had been used to cover a hole in the floor. Fortunately, I was able to retrieve it and save it. But this is the fireplace, which is the back of the, of the number three building, the Boots building, which is going to be refurbished and reinstalled. The tiles are all still there. They've been covered up. So at least the people that, you know, that will be a living room for that apartment. So people living in there will have a early 20th century, late 19th century fireplace in their, in their room. You can see this here, the, these here were for, you can imagine horse and carts reversing in there. So that, that was actually to, to help them turn and go in. But uh, th this was the entrance to it. You'll see it when you come inside here. Welcome. Right, I'll just give you an idea of what this was like before. It's, it's pretty much the same, apart from obviously all this bit has been added on, but that, that entrance porch was exactly the same as that, okay? The, the counter would have gone across here. You come in, there was very little space, uh, but public would have come in. The counter was across there. There was a hatch over there and big fireplace here. Uh, I actually remember it, and a lot of people do remember it, so um, we would use it. You remember it? Uh, so I, I do as well. Yeah, you come in to pay your call. Yeah. So, um, so that was it. This was the original office. Here, that, that was actually solid wall across there. So if you want to step just out the back there, you'll see people have started leaving stuff in. Um, what we wanted it just not to be about Kelly's, but to, to be people's memories of um, the harbour and the maritime area. The gentleman that owned that was the head joiner on Titanic, so that was uh, that was his spirit level. Um, this man here, uh, this this wee boy, actually ended up as crane driver down on the, the harbour here. He lived in McKean's Row. The original windows, the original bay windows, and it's it's just it's a lovely building, it's a unique building, and uh, and I, I must admit it's an honour to come in here every day. My father had a boat down the harbour here, I was brought up here, and uh, and it's just, it's an absolute pleasure to come into work, and I never thought I would hear myself saying that, but it is. So, we've kept it pretty much the same, the staircase is original, you see the, the, the bit coming down here, that's all original, but you'll see, there's a photograph upstairs of the state this place had got into, how, how badly a property developer had allowed this to, to get into. For obvious reasons, they wanted to knock it down to build another block of flats, which they, they, they love doing. And, uh, so thankfully it didn't in this case, and, but it, is, it was the Heritage Lottery funding actually uh, was able, we were able to turn this around because of that, you know, so.